facial nerve. Now, at the end of the presentation, the student should be able to enlist the nuclei of origin and functional components of the facial nerve, comprehend in brief about embryology of the facial nerve, describe the course of the facial nerve, describe its branches and distribution, and lastly, comprehend the clinical anatomy of the facial nerve. Coming to what it really is, there are 12 cranial nerves arising from the brainstem. And the seventh one is the facial nerve. It is a mixed nerve with large motor and a smaller sensory root. Little bit about the development of the facial nerve. It is a second branchial arch nerve and it is going to supply all the structures derived from the mesoderm of the second branchial arch. Coming to nuclei of origin, basically it is coming from the brain stem. So we are going to have nuclei present over there which give rise to this nerve. Okay, We have the motor nucleus, electrometry and superior salivatory nucleus and the nucleus of tractor solitaris. Can you see the motor nucleus over here? Now this is going to receive bilateral innervation from the upper face. The lower face unilateral innervation it is going to intervene with the facial expressions muscles of the facial expressions the posterior belly of digastric the stylohyoid and the stapedius we also have the lacrimatory and the superior salivatory nucleus and the nucleus of tractor solitaris what they do we'll talk about it further Coming to the functional components, okay, functional component, this part will be dealt with separately in a detailed way, but every cranial nerve has certain functional components which are motor or sensory, okay, and sensory, sorry. Amongst the motor, we have two special visceral efferent, the SVE, can you see over here, this is the purple one, okay, motor, yes, so it's coming from the motor nucleus, the facial nerve. Whereas, we also have the general visceral efferent, which is the blue one, and is coming from the superior salivatory and the lacrimatory nuclei. So, it is going to innervate the glands. The sensory one. The sensory, we have the special visceral efferent, the green one, which is going to the nucleus of tractor solitaris. Now, this deals with the perception of taste, nucleus tractor solitaris. We also have the general somatic afferent which is going to the spinal nucleus and tract of the trigeminal nerve. Coming to the course of the nerve, this is a general idea. Please have a look at this diagram of the course of the facial nerve. Now this course is divided into four parts. It has an intracranial root, it is inside the cranium, the intrapetrous root, petrous part of the temporal bone. It's a part of the temporal bone which is intimately connected to the course of the nerve. Then we have how it exists from the cranium and then we have the extracranial root. The intracranial root has three parts, the intrapontine part, the attachment to the brain stem and the course to the posterior cranial fossa. The intrapontine, can you appreciate this is the pons? Now, the motor fibers, they take a sharp bend over here, okay, which forms the internal genu. You saw this uh, diagram, the transverse section in the previous slide. And can you appreciate this bend over here, which is called the internal genu. And this exists in the pond between the nucleus of tractor solitaris and of trigeminal nerve. Nucle this is the nucleus of the tractor solitaris and the spinal tract. Coming to its course through the posterior cranial fossa, from the attachment of the brain stem to the opening of the internal acoustic meatus, this is a cut section of the pons, the motor nucleus, this is the bend. Now, this is the ponto medullary junction. Okay. This is the this is the pons, this is the medulla, this is the ponto medullary junction. From the lateral part, this nerve comes out and then moves in the internal acoustic meatus over here. 
along with the vestibular cochlear nerve and the labyrinthine artery. The intrapetreal shoot. Okay, this is the posterior cranial fossa. If you can visualize, this is the temporal bone. This is the petrous part of temporal bone. This is the mastoid process. This is the styloid process. This is the stylo mastoid foramen over here. This is the brain stem. So can you make out that the intrapetreal course will be here only. And this is further divided into a meatal course and the facial canal. The meatal course over here, when it is moving along the internal acoustic meatus and then within the facial canal. The meatal course, let's come back to it, is wherein the motor root, the motor root is wedged in, in a groove on the antero inferior surface. And the best of the vestibular cochlear nerve. We also have the vestibular cochlear nerve along with um, the facial nerve over here, and only the sensory root separates them. At the base of the internal acoustic meatus over here, the sensory and the motor root they unite to form a trunk which goes into the facial canal. Okay, so this is the it enters from the pons the lateral part of the pontomedullary junction into the internal acoustic meatus along with the vestibular cochlear nerve when it comes out when it comes out from here it unites to form a trunk and runs in the facial canal in the facial canal again we have three parts this is a more detailed facial canal over here we have a labyrinthine part the tympanic part the mastoid or the vertical part the, de the details of which we shall discuss further on now after that this is a cut section of the petrous part of the temporal bone if you can visualize the this previous one this was the mastoid process it has many air filled cavities so this has been cut this has been cut to expose the nerve and we can see that the nerve, facial nerve, exits the cranium from the stylomastoid foramen that I showed you in the previous picture. Now, after it comes out, we have the extracranial course. So, can you appreciate that this is the mastoid process and uh, the styloid process is embedded? We can't see it. The facial nerve is coming out from the stylomastoid foramen. At the base of the skull the nerve next it enters into the parotid gland this is the parotid gland over here high up on the posterior medial surface and passes forwards and downwards behind the mandibular ramus mandibular ramus we can't appreciate it because it has been cut here now this is the substance of the uh, parotid gland within the substance divide into a superior temporofacial and then inferior this is the temporofacial and this is in the inferior cervicofacial usually just behind superficial to the retromandibular vein the trunk branch further can you see it is branching further to form the parotid plexus or the pes ansernis we have the most important thing are the terminal branches of the facial nerve. There are five main terminal branches. They diverge within the gland and leave it anterior medial surface over here to supply the muscles of the facial expressions. They are the temporal, zygomatic, buccal, mandibular, cervical. Now, this pattern is highly variable. Coming to the branches and distribution of the facial nerve, Within the facial canal, within the facial canal, we have the greater petrosal nerve. This is the nerve to stapedius and this is the cordae tympani nerve. This is showing you the facial canal. The greater petrosal nerve, petrosal means it has something to do with the ear. This is nerve to stapedius. This is the muscle over here which helps in dampening of sound. And this is the cordae tympani nerve. At the exit of these 
again you can appreciate the cut part of the mastoid process we can see the air cells over here this is again the same thing this is the ear middle ear can you appreciate the ossicles ear ossicles now at the exit the stylum mastoid foramen this is the mastoid process and uh, then we have okay so at the exit it gives the posterior auricular nerve over here posterior auricular means it goes posterior to the auricle to the ear then it also gives the nerve to digastric over here and a nerve to the stylohyoid this is the stylohyoid muscle so three nerves at the exit from the stylomastoid foramen the posterior auricular nerve the nerve to digastric and the nerve to stylohyoid again we did before the terminal branches within the parotid gland this is the temporal the zygomatic the buccal marginal mandibular cervical branch and the fourth one are the communicating communicating branches within the adjacent cranial and the spinal nerves it is just a repetition the terminal branches temporal zygomatic buccal marginal mandibular and the cervical now coming to a further more important aspect which is the clinical aspects we come to the facial nerve the lesions of the facial nerve now the lesions could be supranuclear and infranuclear a supranuclear lesion or a upper motor neuron lesion over here supranuclear spares the upper part of the face we spoke about it previously also as the fibers supplying the upper part of the face will have the muscles of frontalis and orbicularis oris oculi they have a bilateral control so a supranuclear lesion is going to spare the upper part of the face whereas a lower motor lesion or an infranuclear lesion will cause paralysis of upper and lower as well as the face on the same side can you appreciate this please try to remember the diagrams is an important one Coming to another idiopathic condition is the Bell's palsy, paralysis or paralysis of the facial nerve or sudden onset. Now, can you appreciate that it causes the facial weakness, the loss of sense of taste, drooling, tearing of eyes, pain behind the ear, and drooping of the eye. Another thing is the Ramsay-Hunt syndrome. It is basically a herpes zoster infection of the geniculate ganglion with involvement of the external ear and oral mucosa. We have the vesicular vest vesicular rash because of the herpes zoster infection, which causes a lower motor neuron paralysis of the facial nerve, and we have loss of taste sensation over anterior two third of the tongue because of the cauda tympani nerve. Coming. to the summary summarizing this uh, leg dem we studied in brief about the facial nerve developing from the second brachial arch its various nuclei and the functional components we also studied in detail about the intra and the extra cranial cores the branches of facial nerve and the distant distribution finally after reading all this we correlated the anatomy of facial nerve to its clinical aspect we learned about the upper motor and the lower motor neuron paralysis and about the lesions of the facial nerve and what kind of presentation they have i have certain questions for you all to do first one being describe the course of the facial nerve in detail second is enumerate the branches of facial nerve and describe its distribution and third is describe the differences between supra and infranuclear lesions of the facial nerve thank you